This narrow road with its passing places is known locally as the Staingate. It's one of hundreds of similar roads which crisscross this part of northern England. But what makes this one stand out is that it was once the northern frontier of the entire Roman Empire. And guarding the central section of the Staingate, the important east-west supply route, was the Fort of Vindolanda. Each year from April to mid-September, an army of over 500 archaeology volunteers comes here from all over the world, and each year they make remarkable discoveries. Vindolanda was bought in 1929 by the renowned archaeologist Professor Eric Burley. His grandson Andrew is now its director of archaeology. As the crow flies north of the site, but the Romans built four forts here by the time Hadrian's Wall was built. So oh, really? So the first ones predate the wall? Predate the wall by a good 40 years, and uh, they're a long way down. They're seven or eight metres beneath where we're standing. And would they have been stone built? No, the first six forts here are built in timber, and the last three are in stone. It's the very fact that nine forts have been built right on top of each other here that so much archaeological evidence survives. So this is all part of the temple? This is all part of the temple. It actually stretches from the gate all the way up to the angle tower. This is all three rooms of the quite an impressive building. And what's awesome about this is that we absolutely do not expect to find temples to pagan gods, particularly Eastern cults, inside auxiliary forts. This is the first one that's ever been found anywhere in the Roman Empire. Really? We were actually looking for a toilet block under here because we've got yeah. barracks behind us. And, so you're looking for you latrines know, and you found a temple. Looking for a loo, we found a temple. There is some sort of poetry in that, I'm sure. So these little pillars here, those, are they supporting a floor? Is this a hypercourse system? That's right, exactly right. A hypercourse system. The floor. You can still see the burning on some of the stones here to show that they had to fire it up in the winter time at least. So where would the fire itself have been then? The little furnace is in this room behind. And then the hot air comes through there. Comes through the flue. And, and then, then circulates around right. here. Circulates the floor. under here, up through the walls and out through the chimneys on the top. Keeps you nice and toasty while you chow down on the sacrificial beast, having a bit of a feast in here. So do you know who was worshipped here? We know that the god that was worshipped here is a weather god, a guy called Jupiter Dolocanus, an eastern god all the way from modern day Turkey. So a very exotic religion. Very it? exotic religion, but of course the weather affects everybody wherever you are. So, you know, he's, he's always a popular man. Old, and how uh, do you, how do you know that Jupiter Dolocanus was the deity being worshipped here? Well, we know Jupiter Dolocanus is the deity because just outside the little shrine there, we've got a couple of very nice altars. And there was beautiful carvings of hill on the side, but more importantly, on the face of the altars, the dedicators has actually written his name down in nice big bold letters, no doubt at all. 